Good morning. Good to see everyone on this fine day that God has blessed us with, the second Sunday in the Easter season. <clears throat> Let us begin by looking at our parish notes. The, the schedule this week, there's a trustee meeting tomorrow evening, and it is at 6.30, not 6 o'clock, um, in the office. Um, and if anyone wants to join us, uh, there is also a link that is sent out um, to join um, virtually. And we we're just discussing that, so we're going to make sure that works for tomorrow night. Tuesday brings Christian Connections at 6.15, and that is total vir uh, virtually um, brought forth, so please do join us for that. That link is sent out every Tuesday afternoon. Uh, Wednesday, the Wednesday morning crew is in action, 9 o'clock. They can always use an extra helping hand. Office hours this week will be Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Um, still looking for people to help out for worship, so if you are so moved, please do sign up. Um, the computer lab is ready for use. Make sure, please, to call ahead and that myself or Jenny is here to help you through that. Uh, the donation station, we continue just for a couple more weeks uh, for the local Little Leagues to help them all get ready to play ball. And we are connecting or collecting, of course, items that are listed and also monetary donations. There's a big jug, the big jug on the way out. Um, if you could put some change in there for them, it adds up. The food pantry, dry goods pantry, most needed items of the week are soup, canned pasta, and pasta sauce, garbage bags, plastic wrap, and paper towels. Um, and we're still doing, still doing the infant hat collection, so anybody who continues to make those hats and the prayer shawls, prayer lap blankets, they are amazing. And so thank you for continuing in that ministry as well. Um, also, the preschool is in the midst of a fundraiser. Jenny, did you want to say any more about that? Um, there's a sign up sheet outside in the narthex on that little table. Uh, if anybody wants to show up, you can contact me. Um, you can sign up on the sheet out there. And if you have an envelope with a ton money, you can stick it in my box. It's P-H-M at the top. So there are $11 each. And mm -hmm. Yes, they do. And hopefully, usually in May, they join us. So hopefully we'll see them next month. Um, also, uh, Sunday school, back in session today. Barbara had a fun time, I can tell. Um, and next Sunday, they are scheduled to be sharing in music with us for worship. Um, and... <clears throat> Back to Christian Connections. We will have Christian Connections this week, but the following week there will not be Christian Connections. And then we will be bringing out the newsletter with the dates for May. Um, and any articles for that newsletter are due on the 23rd. Now, looking ahead, uh, Anna Maria came in the office this, my office this week and started looking at dates in May because we had gotten a few phone calls for building usage. And we looked, and I also talked to Carol Burnett um, because we always, for the spring sale, have the spring sale when the cleanup is in the borough. And so the spring sale, mark your calendars, will be May 20th. Um, and we will we'll be accepting your items, your treasures to sell. Uh, the 17th, 18th, and 19th, um, because also that week on Tuesday when we look at the calendar is Election Day, and we are a polling place. So we will be having a soup and hoagie sale. So it will be a very busy week around the church that week. And then the next day, the Sunday, begins um, uh, one of four recitals that we have. So. The church is in use, and God's people are doing much 
Uh, but it will be a busy time, but please um, make sure that those dates are on your calendars. Barbara, you can see Barbara if you want to help out with the hoagies soup. Um, and also talk to Carol about the sale, right? Okay. Um, and I will be off uh, April 24th through May 3rd. Ron Lucas will be leading us, leading you in worship that Sunday. And um, Carol will be off for two weeks. So um, for the second Sunday, uh, the week I'm gone, Bob Reynolds will be leading music. And all pastoral emergencies will be covered by Pastor Eric. So you have his number there in case um, you need him. Any other announcements? Any other announcements? If not, let us begin to truly worship our God in the spirit of prayer. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, Lord of all life, Lord, we gather this day in your sanctuary and near and far together in connection wherever people are. We are all, Lord, your people. We all worship. We all worship your holiness as one, as your church together. As we do so, Lord, let our worship be honorable and pleasing in your sight. Fill us, Lord with your holiness and your goodness, that we may shine your glory in the week ahead, that we may live our Easter beliefs, that others will come to believe as well. We pray this in Christ's name. Amen. If you'll please rise for the call to worship. It's the Sunday after Easter, and we are alone in our faith. Though we have hidden ourselves in a locked room and huddled together as ones who build barriers, By the power of your Holy Spirit, grant us the trust to believe the gospel. Our opening hymn today is Christ is Alive, number 318.
please be seated. Will the children please come forward for their message time?
Good morning. Please join me in the prayer for illumination. Well, living Lord, who caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning, grant us so to hear them and retain them that we may ever hold fast to the blessed hope of everlasting life which you have given us in our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The Gospel reading today is from the book of John, chapter 20, verses 19 through 31. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together, with the doors locked for fear of the Jewish leaders, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side, The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again, Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, their sins are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. Now Thomas, also known as Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my finger where the nails were and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here, see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, My Lord and my God. Then Jesus told him, Because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Jesus performed many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book. But these are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. The word of God for the people of God.
let us pray. Heavenly Father, melt me, mold me, and use me this day to bring your message to your people. Amen. So if we set the scene, it is still Easter in our biblical account. And the disciples, they are not where everyone else is. Can imagine what the city was like? city is abuzz, the streets, the people hearing this news. Maybe it's a rumor, maybe it's not. Who do they trust? What do they believe? That Jesus, this man Jesus, who said he was God's son, had risen. So we have all of this going on, and the disciples, except Thomas, are hiding out. They're not amazed and jumping for joy at the news of the resurrection. They had placed themselves under self, let's say, imprisonment. Not what you would think their response would have been to this great news that they heard. They weren't living at all at this point, really. Did you ever feel like that? Not to that magnitude, but did you ever feel like that? You were just all by yourself and you put yourself there. That's where they were. They needed Jesus. We all need Jesus sometimes more than other times. When we confine ourselves in what we declare to ourselves as shame or fear, worry, we are not living. Instead, we're hiding out from being who God made us to be from living out our purpose, from being with the ones that God gave us to love, from counting our blessings. We can't count our blessings if we're confined to focusing on our wrongs or what we perceive as misgivings that may never come to be. And it's, this is what it's like for the disciples. If we confine ourselves again, and for them as well, there's no trust, there's no faith in the one who can make all things right. We lock ourselves up. What good did it do that Jesus went through all he went through for us? The humiliation, the beatings, crucifixion, but then the rising, all that pain would be for nothing. And he did that all to provide us with this incredible gift that we should always be free. Is that, that is what he gave us. Freedom to live, freedom to love without fear. The power to overcome any challenge, any tests, any hardships, any wrongs of the world that we can conquer the falsehoods and the stuff sometimes that the world throws at us. We are Easter people. We are to live alive every second of every day, every single day that we're given upon the earth with fearless faith because of our risen Savior, Jesus Christ who delivered us, delivered us from the ills, from the wrongs, from the misconceptions, from anything that might hold us back from actively feeling hope in our lives, being blessedly assured if we believe. We always will be blessedly assured that all is well with our souls. And from creatively sharing the joy that lasts forever. That is what we need to do. We, if we lock ourselves away, we can't share that joy. But we need to be able to always portray that joy to others in the world that are suffering worse than we are. When we shouldn't be suffering at all because Jesus suffered for us. 
Jesus didn't die for us to be stuck in the shadows. He died that we are to illuminate, illuminate that divine light unto a world that needs to know peace so badly. Not just any peace, the peace of God, which is differently defined than worldly peace. It's not just the absence of strife, but it's more than that. The peace of God is that it's harmony. It's more of a harmonious feeling, calmness of mind and body and spirit that supersedes any earthly circumstances. It's a tranquil state of appreciation and contentment. This is all the peace of God. It is humility that produces courage and encouragement to understand that if we can't get to that point, figure something out, we trust in God because God has it covered. This peace is transforming and it is victorious. The peace we feel at first when we feel Our guilty consciences, again, we've ever been in this place, are washed away clean. That feeling, that feeling is what the disciples should have been feeling on that first Easter evening. So finally, when Jesus comes and answers what would be their prayers as they sit there in this dimly lit room, then... They have this peace of God. And Thomas, Jesus came. Thomas wasn't there. He came back a week later again. Thomas was there. And to reassure them, and Jesus came to remind them of all that he had taught them in the earlier days when he was with them in ministry, including these words. My peace I give to you. My peace I leave with you. I do not give as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not let them be afraid. The teaching of Jesus. These disciples needed God's peace. They needed a reminder of all of this to move them forward. To move them toward their futures, which were filled with so much that God needed them to accomplish. There's a lot to do. They thought their lives were going to be lost. They were lost without their master, without their teacher, their friend, Jesus. They had left everything earlier in their lives for him and went with him. And now he had left them, they thought. And so what would happen to them now? They figured again that these Jewish leaders would be searching for them to take them out as well as they took Jesus. When in their dread and darkness, again, Jesus comes. He doesn't come by way of knocking at the door. Jesus is in a different state of body. He just visibly emerges. And he, in that moment, again, fulfills their greatest need. He says to them twice on the first time, peace be with you. And then again when he's there with Thomas, peace be with you. Peace is what they needed. Peace is what we all need. It's what everyone needs. And notice Jesus, he isn't mad. He isn't upset. He's not chastising them for scattering and running away in his deepest need of our for abandoning him when he needed help, lots of help. Nor is he rebuking Peter for denying him when he needed him most. The risen Lord showed them his scars to prove it is true. The tomb is empty. He was on the move, Jesus was, and they needed to be on the move as well. There was a lot of living to do. There was no time for doubt, no time for confinement. So Thomas then, after his time of seeing Jesus, 
he then too believes beyond the shadow of a doubt, Jesus is indeed risen. Then Thomas is the first of the original disciples that we have scripturally proclaim, my Lord and my God, my Lord and my God, first affirmation of faith of the resurrected Christ. Resurrected living is all about liberated living characterized with harmony, with serenity, with confidence in Christ, with the reconciliation of praise that breaks everyone out, should break everyone out in rejoicing, for the Lord kept a very long time promise of relational restoration, motivated by what? By the most powerful, mighty, passionate love there ever was or will be. We all need to, to feel that sense again of calm, of love in our lives. Again, sometimes more than others. Without this heaven-sent peace, we wouldn't be able to do anything. We would be stuck, completely stuck right where we were, right where we are. We would be prisoners of our own making, existing without anything to look forward to, without any awareness of a clean forgiven conscience. conscience. We have that. This would be, if we lived our lives like this, if Jesus didn't do this, and if we do it now, if we live like this, this would be what we would call striving to survive instead of having determination to thrive. And we need to thrive because Jesus did more than that for us. The strife and the struggling were over. They're over long ago. As death was defeated and that endless victory won. Will we face battles in this life? Absolutely. You betcha we will. But we are empowered to keep calm and to carry on. And also to always keep celebrating this great news that our Savior lives, and so too shall we. We have this hope. Instead of stewing and focusing on what might go wrong or be wrong, we can walk with certainty that our every need is met by our ever-loving, ever-living Lord. We might have to exercise a lot of faith in believing in trying times, that there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. It teaches others then to do the same. And some unforeseen circumstances or hard seasons, they might require extra time in prayer for us. And there's nothing wrong with that. God is delighted to be in communication through prayer with us. In good times, in bad times, in sad times, God wants to share everything with us so that we could know joyful moments. If we need questions answered, what's the best thing to do? Go to God in prayer. Don't try to just exist in doubt. God is waiting, ever waiting, to supply answers and support to gain resurrected motivation for us again to go on. As the disciples sat in gloom and grief and fear, absorbed in this stricken state, caught in confusion and devastation, it must have been an awful, awful period for them sitting there. I would not have wanted to be one of them. I would not have wanted to walk in one of their sandals. Could you imagine being one of them? 
I couldn't. To believe or not to believe, look at all they're going through. But from our perspective, from this side of the cross, from this side of the complete written word of God, and from God's viewpoint, were the disciples in a state of self-confinement? Well, yes, yes they were. Yet they also, one could say, were in a state of self or God refinement. They were being refined as they sat there and they didn't know it. They had to make it through the trenches to truly comprehend the scope of the gospel truth that Jesus was alive, and that meant a monumental transformation in living for them. Because, here's the thing, they and we are not living only for ourselves. We are living for much more. We live with incredible, meaningful resolve to do God's will, to move the world along toward total restoration that is coming with a mindset of hope and the peace of God, for Christ will come again in glory. Jesus told his disciples that. We are doubted. Doubtedly, we, we doubt. We are blessed, though to be alive in this season of the salvation story. We're blessed to be alive in this season of Easter, for it is not one day. And it is not a season as we know it. It's an eternal season. So we are not to limit ourselves to timid quietness in the season that we live in. As if we don't have a limitless, loving God who would stop at nothing to give us everything. We have to be bold. We have to make some noise. We have to cause a Christian commotion to bring the world along with us. We were not meant to miss out on anything. We were meant to speak out about our God. God is counting on us to show this hurting world that what you know when you have everything like we do, everything that we need, what it is like. We have to show others that because of faith, all things are possible. We will overcome any obstacle and conquer any opposition for we are refined along the way in our journey of faith from impurities, from our flaws, from confusion, from shame, from our own personal scars, inside scars and outside scars, from distracting pollutants of the world that attempt to separate us from our living Lord. As Easter people, we are shaped, we are molded, we are purified to rejoice and shout aloud that Jesus is risen. He lives. And when folks look at you like you're a bit off balance, if you go out and fully live this incredibleness of Easter, you can fill them with the old, old story about it how a savior came from glory, gave his life on Calvary to save a wretch like me, that he lives. And if they ask you then, people, they look at you funny and they ask you, how do you know Jesus lives? You've got the answer. He walks with me. He talks with me along life's narrow ways. He lives he lives salvation to impart. You ask me how I know Jesus lives? Because he lives within my heart. He lives within our hearts. And we are moved and motivated by that. And if all of this is done, you are sure to cause a stir. 
and have this Christian commotion going on. But you're going to leave people curious and yearning to know more of the evident assurance that no matter what's going on around you, you can rejoice. You are the Easter example. You plant seeds of hope and of that peace of God. You cultivate them. Once you plant them, the Holy Spirit will take over from there. So continue to celebrate your salvation, your new life, with a skip in your step, singing it in tune with the glorious wonders of creation's melodies, and knowing that peace is always with you. So have no fear, because Jesus is here. Amen. Our hymn of response today, for this second week in the Easter season, is number 304, Easter people, raise your voices. If you'll please stand, let us sing together, loud and proud. Please be seated. So we come to a time of prayer in the family of faith. Do we have any new concerns that we wish to lift up to our Lord? Any new concerns? Um, we still continue to pray for Dawn and for Alice. We continue to pray for Merle and for Sis. Um, no answers yet there, but they still continue to wait and know that they have a lot of support from their church family. We continue to pray for Mary and Tom Tanfield and for Dan Edwards and for so many people who are grieving. There are a lot of families, if you look at our list, just in this area who are grieving. But let us pray that they grieve with eternal hope and the peace that God promises to them. Did the service yesterday for Shirley Flight. It's a beautiful service with people talking about her life. And so we, we remember them, but they are of great faith and great example. And um, if not any concerns, we have joys. And I'd like to start with, it is a beautiful thing to see Lori Brink back in church. Absolutely. It's great to see you here. Anyone else? Any joys? Yes, Carol. Oh, 
Okay. Okay. All right. Gotcha. Well, answers, and we'll continue to pray. Thank you, Carol. Pat. <laughs> Thank you for that report, Pat. Yes, yeah, summertime is coming, so those cans will be opening. You're correct. So bring us the tabs. Anything else? If not, then let us begin in silent prayer. Pray from your heart to the God who loves you. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayers. Let us all, Lord, be praying with confidence that you are indeed risen and you give us forgiveness and freedom. And you also, Lord, call us. You send us to serve, knowing that we are never alone, that our hearts are to burst with triumphant grace with love that looks beyond flaws and sees creative perfection in action. Lord, let us ever give thanks to you and proclaim to all people, my Lord and my God. Let us not ever, Lord, confine ourselves, but let us be refined. Let us know that we are being always refined to let you be God and let us not try to be to let us, Lord, feel that amazing love. Let us always feel that every day that Jesus has given to each of us. And Lord, may we look at our scars, know our scars are healed by your powerful yet gentle touch of restoration, to bring us to a state of rejoicing, to be overjoyed daily, as those disciples felt when they encountered the risen Christ in that upper room, when the darkness became everlasting light of life anew. And Lord, we pray for much in our hearts between self and Savior, as well as we do lift up to you though all those on our prayer list, including Dawn and Alice, Merle and Sis. We pray for Dan and Mary and Tom, and for all those families who are grieving. Let them indeed grieve knowing that they are ever promised life upon life. And Lord, we pray for Bill and for Phil. And Lord, so many joys this day come our way. We are thankful that Lori is back where she belongs to worship you with her church family. We thank you for answers for little Russell. Lord, we continue to pray for him and his family. And we are ever thankful, Lord, for all of your servants and for your church together that are so active in ministry and mission and making good things happen, that this clearness, clarity of living and love of Easter will happen in the world. Let us continue now to pray using the words that Jesus taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Will the ushers please come forward to collect this morning's tithes and offerings? <clears throat>
Let us pray together. Holy God, you treat us not like the stern disciplinarian, but like the forgiving parent who runs to embrace us when we've rebelled or disappointed. Your mercy gives us the openings to try again, to return into your grace, to pick ourselves up and brush ourselves off. You invite us back into the inheritance you desire for us. May our offering this day reflect our gratitude for your pardoning love. Amen. Praise be to God. Our hymn of sending forth this day is Christ is Risen, number 307. this benediction. Go forth in the refined path of fearless faith, blessed and assured by God the Father, Jesus the Son, ever led forth with excitement of what is yet to come by the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you.